Greetings all. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Malika Mehta and I work with Atlas Core as the Talent Acquisition Manager. I extend a special welcome to members of American Indian Foundation and Atlas Core communities. With your support, this partnership has been possible and this year we officially launched uh, our second um, straight wave of American India Foundation Banyan Impact Fellowship in the United States, a collaboration between American India Foundation and Atlas Core. Now, we're thrilled to continue that successful partnership into the second year. The fellowship is the US service focused leg of American Indian Foundation bilateral fellowship program and is being implemented through the partnership with Atlas Core. This partnership really represents an organizational milestone for both the organizations. We have collaborated previously as well for the same fellowship initiative. In the past, over the years, the American Indian Foundation also hosted an Atlas Core Fellow. In addition, the idea of Atlas Core uh, originated in India while our founder, Scott Beale, was living and working there and our first fellows included three Indians. Today, we're excited to strengthen our ties with India and we're thrilled to officially partner with the American India Foundation. To celebrate this event, we bring together um, we bring together dynamic speakers from both the organization. We shall hear from the American India Foundation program manager, Boyan Teshnau, our AIF Manian Impact Fellow, Manushi Sharma, who's joined us, and she will be briefly talking about her fellowship experience with us. You can learn more about this collaboration and how you can apply and participate in the collaboration at aif.atlascore.org. On that note, it is my honor to welcome America India Foundation Program Manager Boyan to share a few words. He has 20 years of experience in international education and cultural exchange and has worked in multiple countries and different roles uh, as a researcher and lecturer at the University of Mainz, uh, Nanjing University and in Amman. As an expert consultant at the Goethe Institute in New York, uh, he managed exchange programs between Germany and the US. At the Goethe Institute in Amman, uh, in Jordan, Boyan acted as a program manager and facilitated projects and facilitated projects to work with the marginalized groups in severe uh, crisis situations. We would like to welcome him over to you, Boyan. Yeah, thank you so much, Moira. Thank you so much for this nice introduction. And uh, we here at the American India Foundation could be more excited about this uh, collaboration, which also helps our fellowship program to become truly binational. Um, I would like to give you a little bit of an overview of the American India Foundation, of the fellowship program, and then also of our um, collaboration that we are very excited about. So the idea of the American India Foundation was actually um, born amidst the uh, tragic devastation of the Gujarat earthquake in 2001. And uh, the American India Foundation is all about the support of underprivileged communities in India with a focus on children and women. And we do all of our programs in a way that it strengthens the partnership between the two largest democracies in the world, which is the United States and India. So we are committed to catalyzing social and economic change in India and building a lasting bridge between the United States and India. And we do this through high impact interventions in sectors like education, livelihoods, um, public health and leadership development. And we work closely together with local communities, with governments, with NGOs to create and scale sustainable impact. The fellowship program is actually American India's, um, uh, the American India Foundation's oldest program. It started in 2001 as well. Um, also, in, in the context of the Gujarat earthquake, it was about disaster relief. So the first fellows in the program were actually fellows from the US going to India, where they served um, in the context of disaster relief. Um, the program has evolved over the year. Uh, over the years, I also want to give you a brief um, historic overview. So, under the um, motto "Surf, Learn, Lead," our um, fellows have um, served altogether in 218 partner organizations in India over the years in 25 states altogether. We have an alumni network of 512 
fellows so far. And the fellows work on different thematic areas that are, of course, also interrelated. And these thematic areas have expanded over the years. You know, when it started with disaster the relief um, later other thematic areas um, came into play and now we look at a wide um, array of different thematic areas that the fellows work in including justice education public health livelihoods lgbtq rights human rights so there's um, a whole bunch of different thematic areas and um, in after its inception in 2001 later on in 2009 it was renamed to the William J. Clinton Fellowship uh, for Service in India, also in honor of uh, President Clinton's role in the uh, founding of the American India Foundation. And um, from 2011 onwards, this was a, um, a big step for the program. The cohorts did not only include American fellows serving in India, but the cohorts were then um, a mix of Indian and uh, US fellows, which made the program um, binational. And now, as I mentioned, we are very excited about the collaboration with Atlas Core, which now also allows us to have uh, fellows from India serving with organizations in the US. And we started this um, collaboration last year. We are now in the first cycle of the program and very excited about the um, second year. Um, and um, yeah, later also from uh, one of our current fellows, which is always exciting to get a uh, first-hand um, insight into the program. So the focus of the program is really about the strengthening of civil societies across um, US and India. So we are fostering future leaders and social change makers who are seeking a career in civil society and uh, the social sector. Um, the capacity building also works through the international exchange, um, which the new collaboration with Atlas Core also contributes to, um, and uh, service with communities and NGOs. Um, we are approaching development issues through a multidisciplinary lens. I've already mentioned that, um, you know, all these um, thematic areas the fellows work in are also um, interrelated. So it's uh, we, we are working towards the crafting of cross-sectoral solutions rather than looking at the issues individually, but they are all interrelated. Um, and so, yeah, now with uh, this... At our collaboration, we are happy to uh, um, strengthen the international setup um, of our program, also um, giving new opportunities to the fellows uh, to interact with other Atlas Core fellows from all over the world, making use of the Virtual Leadership Institute of Atlas Core, and also, of course, of the um, existing networks within AIF and also Atlas Core, which um, the to people um, the two countries as a further step in the history of the program last year we also rebranded and uh, the new name of the program is now the Bendian Impact Fellowship um, also to reflect on our um, focus on the um, sustainable development goals uh, that our projects are related to and uh, new thematic areas including climate justice so after a successful pilot with five fellows currently serving in the US, we are now very excited to um, start with the second year of this collaboration. And only in professional for the to benefit from the professional experience trainings and networks from both organizations, from the American India Foundation and so. Thank you to all our supporters, our partners, uh, alumni and donors who make all of this possible. And um, of course, the uh, whole team at Atlas Core and together we hope to scale impact and solve the development challenges of the world by investing in the leadership potential of our fellows. So thank you very much. And we are very excited about the months and years to come. Well, and thank you for your vision and energy, and thank you for uh, telling us so much about AIF. It is truly an honor to partner with such an accomplished organization and to continue this legacy of what you all have created with your fellowship program and to be an active part of strengthening the US-India connections.
And speaking of legacy, one of the most effective ways to understand the impact of this fellowship is by hearing from the participants, from hearing from our fellows. Uh, today, we have with us Manushi Sharma to share her experience and her story with us. So uh, Manushi joined Atlas Core as a part of Class 46 Fellow in July and is serving at Collaborating for Resilience. Uh, Manushi is a global health professional with over seven years of experience in program management and implementation. Through her engagement with George Institute for Global Health, the Royal Thai Ministry of Public Health, and the Public Health Foundation of India, she has developed a deep insight into the context and complexity of health system gaps in countries of Global South. Manushi has hands-on experience in supporting and providing strategic leadership for planning, developing, and implementing public health uh, research projects in developing countries of sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, and Asia uh, Pacific. Uh, I would like to invite Manushi to talk about her experience and her fellowship journey. Sure. Thank you, Malika. Thank you, Beyond, for your comments. Uh, my fellowship journey so far, so as you rightly explained that I have a background in global health, and what I find that uh, personally, I strongly believe that the problems that we face, be it global health, be it climate change, you know, they, they, the, the root cause is somewhat similar, but our approach to dealing in with, with these problems is always very siloed. So that also served as my motivation for applying to this fellowship, because I want to be at the intersection of public health and climate change. And so I was really looking to pivot, but not as much. Uh, I wanted to broaden my area of work to see what are the intersectoral approaches that kind of fit in this intersection and what what, what can be actually done to de-silo the approaches that we have in global development. And so uh, AIF come Atlas Core was the perfect platform for me. And uh, with and so how I, when I was developing my application also, I always, I mostly focused on my transferable skills that although my background is in global health, I also wanted to expand. And so what are the enablers in my profile that will actually help me be successful when I'm pivoting, quote unquote. So uh, my, that's how I've been paired with uh, collaborating for resilience. C Core works uh, in environmental governance, and I feel it's a great segue for me into what I really want to do. It, it's it's a stepping stone into my future plans. Um, having said that, my experience so far has been great. It's it's more like an on-job training, I would say. So you could also like the. I would say it's better than enrolling yourself in a course to learn. Of course, that has its own advantages, but this is more of a lived experience of um, tackling climate change through uh, strengthening environmental governance. And so that has been really, really great for me. And I don't think I could have had a richer experience if I would have enrolled for a formal course in international development or, or practice. Um, there's a lot of thought that I put in in preparing my application and a lot of effort. Um, I can discuss about that later. But so far, my experience has been um, whatever expectations I had uh, in terms of the quality of work, nature of work, people I interact with, those have all been, um, uh, been mostly exceeded just to be with the people who are actually working in the field and to get to know them and the first-hand stories that they have because right now we are in the very nascent stages of you know oh climate change oh planetary healthcare oh what can we do what what do we have what are the learnings that we have how do we take them forward how do we sustain this momentum that we've created so in that sense it has been really really um intellectually stimulating and nourishing um um I know if there are any more specific questions for me, or do you want me to describe more of my experience? Uh, thank you, Manushi, for talking about your experience and your journey so far with the host organization. I uh, love the segment where you mentioned about how much effort you have put into your application. I think it will be super helpful for all our young applicants. Uh, we would be having Manushi 
and beyond back in our last segment where we take uh, questions from the audience. Um, but bef uh, before that, uh, I would like to talk about Atlas Core and our vision and mission. Uh, Atlas Core is an international network of social sector leaders and organizations that promotes innovation, cooperation, and solutions to address the 21st century challenges. Our mission here is to address critical social issues. If you're a person who thinks about inequality, gender issues, COVID, climate change, and all the conflicts which are surrounding us right now, this is what we want to do. We want leaders like you to join hands with us. Atlas Code develops leaders and strengthens organizations through training programs and global community of skilled social change professionals. We are so grateful to be working together with one of the most important countries and an important organization to focus on Indian talent, on Indian social change leaders and civ uh, civil society leaders who will get the opportunity to serve in the US and in India. And we want to broaden that. Um, Atlas Core represents, uh, Atlas Core, like our community represents over 100 and 10 countries, in addition to developing those leadership skills, we want to bring people together and connect them to create a network of global change makers. We see a need to be connected, uh, to be connected as global leaders and uh, as well local leaders focused on challenges like never before. Um, we encourage young leaders, young civil society leaders to apply for this fellowship and help, uh, help us bring you to US to build your skills and return to India and work together as a global and at the local level to solve challenges like we have never seen before. I want to thank you all and want to thank the America, uh, American Indian Foundation and my own team who have worked together really hard to put this fellowship and this um, program together and uh, for the support. Um, this was uh, truly inspiring to hear uh, Boyan here uh, and Manushi uh, speak about their experience and their vision behind this collaboration. So on that note, uh, I would like to share more details about the fellowship. Uh, so all of you who are listening in and might be interested and thinking about applying, now is the time to focus, tune in and learn more. Uh, I want to remind all of you that most of the information about the collaboration and the application form is on our website, which is aif.atlascore.org. Uh, okay, so going over the overview of the fellowship and uh, really talking about what this fellowship aims towards, the fellowship aims to contribute to AIF's existing goal of strengthening the US-India ties by creating a network of change makers committed to civil society engagement, equipped with cross-cultural lens training and network necessary to effectively address critical social issues and drive innovation. Our fellows will participate in 12 month US fellowship model. The fellows will serve as a uh, will serve full time at their host organizations in the United States, addressing issues that uh, uh, complement their expertise. They increase their leadership skills through hands-on experience. Uh, they increase their leadership skills through hands-on experience while developing invaluable connections to learn effective practices. The fellows work on broad range of social issues from education to environment to human rights and so on. The fellows role and daily responsibilities at their host organizations varies greatly from the organization to organization. So Atlas Core would be helping and supporting and sponsoring fellows on J1 trainee visa and cover most of their basic expenses that would be required. The US fellowship allows participants to engage in a group cultural activities like monumental tours, sporting events, and US holiday celebrations. Since many, um, yeah. Uh, since many US uh, embassies across the world are still operating at a reduced capacity, uh, we do see that uh, our fellows might have to serve uh, remotely for a period of one month and then transitioning into a 12 month in person uh, serving yeah, their host organizations in the United States. Um, the Atlas Core Global Leadership uh, Lab, which is the leadership training that will be part of the fellowship, uh, comprises of 200 hours of experiential learning that is both theoretical and practical um, and a three to four uh, day, day training immersion 
over the course of the fellowship uh, in the in the coming months fellows um, participate in presentation workshop led by innovative social change leaders who share pra practical strategies for social impact as well as their own professional journey this professional development series explores uh, hard skills as well as critical soft skills uh, that would be very helpful and required for the fellowship our um, fellows benefit uh, our uh, fellows benefit from dual professional development and networking opportunities, uh, both at AIF and Atlas Core Global uh, Leadership Lab. Uh, to create uh, to create the next generation of social change makers, AIF and Atlas Core encourage emerging leaders with minimum of five years of work experience. Uh, professional experience to apply for this opportunity and ideal candid candidates are mid-career professionals who have experience in leading processes or teams and have in influenced uh, an organization strategy uh, specifically or uh, the requirement for this fellowship is that uh, a person should be an indian citizen and uh, or should have relevant work experience at least uh, or aiming towards three to five years to apply for the fellowship um, now I would be explaining how uh, one can apply for the fellowship, and um, uh, and it is a fairly simple process. Uh, I have mentioned that the application for the fellowship is available at aif.atlasco.org. It's a multi-step uh, process to apply for the fellowship. Uh, the first step, of course, is to fill out the application form. Uh, the application for this fellowship is our classic Atlas Core fellowship, and it is the same. Uh, the application requires a copy of your undergraduate transcript or your diplomas and two refer uh, references. You have to attach your CV um, or for the application, uh, as well as when you're applying for uh, our fellowship, uh, for the Banyan Impact Fellowship, each applicant is required to answer additional questions, which will be our supplement questions, which are part of the application form. Um, once you have reviewed your application and submitted your application. It is not necessary to submit your references while you're submitting your application. So uh, post the deadline, our uh, early consideration deadline is December 15th. Uh, after that, uh, applicants can take about two weeks to submit uh, their references. Um, once the application passes through an application review and if the application is selected, Atlas Co conducts a Skype interview and then we shortlist our potential applicants uh, who are also called semi-finalists. Um, this fellowship would also be requiring that uh, each applicant interviews with the American India Foundation as well. Our priority deadline, uh, as mentioned, is December 15th for consideration of the program uh, for 12-month in-person fellowship, which will be starting from July 2023 up till July 2024. Uh, the eligibility requirements are on the screen. You can also visit our uh, website to know about the eligibility for the same. Um, before we open the floor for question and answers, I would like to give some sh uh, quick sh uh, tips for each applicant uh, for their application form. Uh, it is extremely important for applicants to be extremely specific with their application. So I would recommend every applicant to be specific in your responses to the questions, especially when you're talking about your accomplishments and your professional experience. Think about what makes your profile unique. Think about what makes your experience and your professional uh, journey unique. Or uh, coming back to Manushi's point, when she said she really thought about the skills which are transferable she has and that, that sets her apart from the other applicants and she focused on them, I would encourage each applicant to focus on that. Uh, a second part, which is the skill section, which is important, is crucial for us to understand an applicant's ability to make uh, to make the most successful host match. These questions should be answered thoroughly uh, as the most successful candidates demonstrate their expertise in a specific skill set by providing detailed information about their professional experience and responsibilities with concrete examples which feed into this, uh, their specific skill set. We not only want to know your responsibilities that you have served as a professional, we would also love to know about the accomplishments that you have uh, accomplished due and demonstrated that specific skill set. 
if your application does not demonstrate at least two years of work experience in one skill area, then it is unlikely that your application would be successful. Hence, please be extremely mindful when you're filling in your skill set. Um, in one of the eligibilities is uh, uh, for the fellowship is English. Please, uh, in your communication in the application form, be clear and concise. And one of the most important parts of our application is the bio, the biography that each applicant has to fill in. It is important to write a strong bio since that is what is a what a prospect host organization would receive. And that is the first impression that they would get of an applicant. It is important to ensure that you demonstrate your professional experience, your accomplishment and your personal experience thoroughly through the bio. Uh, in short, if I had to say you have to sell yourself in those 300 words in your bio that you basically add up. OK, um, thank you all for being a part of this. I would like to uh, invite Boyan and Manushi uh, to take up some question and answers from our audience. We have a few questions which are coming in. I think one of the most asked questions that we get, and um, I've been frequently personally asked myself, because we have the same application form for our classic Atlas Co uh, Fellowship and the Banyan Impact Fellowship. Uh, I think many a times applicants get confused if they only have could apply for one of the initiatives or both of the initiatives. So I would like to specify and reiterate that when you apply for the Banyan Impact Fellowship, you will also be considered for the classic Atlas Core Fellowship if you're a semi-finalist. And in case you do not make it to the Banyan Impact Fellowship, you would still be considered for the classic Atlas Core uh, uh, Fellowship. And uh, in order to be considered for the AIF uh, Fellowship, each applicant has to fill in uh, the additional question section because that is the most important. Uh, Manushi, would you like to uh, elaborate on how was your um, experience or writing the supplement questions and uh, what were some guiding principles that you went by when you were answering them? Sure. Um, adding to what you said earlier, like I think one thing is to practice storytelling not just verbally but also in written and it's a skill that will come in handy not only for your application writing but all through the fellowship because for me like i wanted to combine two things together uh, and so with public health and climate change how do i tell the story to somebody who doesn't think that they go together right so that is essential so when you Pitch essentially is when you articulate your thoughts and you put in your passion and don't be afraid to be honest. Like for me, I did foresee this as a challenge and I honestly admitted that in my application that look, I know it's going to be challenging, but I also think it's going to be worth it at the same time. And there's going to be some massive learning happening there. And so also put in a bit of your personality in these questions, because what sets you apart that what is the drive that keeps you going or what is it that you actually achieve to uh, want to uh, achieve once this fellowship ends? Also, um, that um, this is just a stepping stone. It is a significant milestone, but it's not meant to last forever. So you have to plan accordingly. So putting all these elements just shows that you're practical, you're ready to take on any challenges. And uh, you you will also, it's also important to remember that, you know, that every organization, like the fellowship is in an investment in people. And you are in a way advancing the fellowship's missions and goals. So how do you fit into that? And if you've thought of something, how does that align with the organization's goals? And, uh, and to have that in your... Um, application in your answers it just shows that how aligned you are with the 
clashed with the entire um, the la larger mission of the AIF and Atlas Core. And also to add what Manushi just said, I mean, um, speaking about being passionate about, um, you know, having an impact in the social sector, uh, we also talked about skills, and this is, of course, important to point out, but then um, just also for you to know that sometimes we have fellows that might be professionals in the public health sector, but are very passionate about a certain project or, you know, tapping into another sector, and this is definitely also considered, you know, so it's a combination of, of both, you know, I have it bringing skill sets, but it can also be um, the case that you might be placed with an organization where you work in a new area, you know, so um, also try to, uh, to uh, um, make your passion come across in the application as well. Yeah. yeah, for me, it was marrying my goals with the goals of the Atlas Core uh, and the AIF uh, foundations, uh, longer term impact and once you know oh, yeah it's one thing to say that oh my goals are in alignment but how are they in alignment what are you going to do about those like what is the action point thank you manushi for uh, mentioning that um i think uh one thing is that the application is very thorough and we really want to get to know you as an applicant. So it's extremely important to really flesh out your experience and especially match it to the skill set that you're writing um, on the application and tie your professional experience to your skill set and uh, kind of flesh out like how you have developed and honed that uh, skill set over uh, a period of time. Uh, we have another question, which is, will the fellowship be remote, in person, or a hybrid combination? So I think I can take that question up. Uh, so our fellows will serve mainly in the US. That is, the fellowship will uh, start on, the fellowship in May start with a short period remotely. We're anticipating about one month. And um, then the, major like the uh, majority of the fellowship or uh, will be 12 month in the uh, in United States with the host organization. Once in the US, most of our host organizations currently have a hybrid office policy where the fellows would sometimes be in person at the office and sometimes be uh, working from their home. For all our fellows, uh, in-person engagement with the host organizations and through our global leadership lab activities is an important part of the cultural and professional experience that our fellows would be going through. Um, our previous fellows did uh, serve uh, in the hybrid uh, combination uh, as well. Manushi, do, do you want to maybe uh, elaborate on what does your typical workday look like and uh, how many times do you in-person engage in your office space? So at present, I'm, I, I go every day. But uh, the workspace that we have is... Uh, it's a co-working space of sorts and it's a collective of all the a lot of or not all but a lot of organizations in the global development space so it's it's just great to interact with people doing some incredible work because with the us elections coming up there are uh, organizations working in uh, transparency um, then there are organizations that are working in political economy sort of analysis um, there are, it's not just limited to global health anymore for me. It's the entire global development space. And the good part is that US is the hot seat of all this action. And so you're actually talking and talking and looking at these people who are doing some very, very incredible work. Uh, just in, uh, like, they're just there. Like, open partnerships is somebody I connected uh, at my workplace. And they're doing immense like immensely impressive work in um global governance and transparency and so it it like it like sort of fosters your motivation that okay you know you're in the right place so and maybe other also than that, I, I mean, sorry <laughs> no no go 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 so, no, I, so I, that, I, like other fellows are maybe they have a hybrid model for my organization i'm meant to go every day but i have no regrets at all Hmm. Yeah, I only wanted to mention, I mean, as we all know, the last um, two and a half years have been challenging and we are now all excited to be back in person. So the fellowship is, is planned to be uh, in person, but also 
you know, things we've learned over the, la um, over the last two years also help us, of course, um, to, to go hybrid or, you know, I'm, I'm, it was mentioned earlier that, you know, visa processes maybe tend to be a bit longer now, you know, since uh, not everything is running on full capacity again. So this also gives us a chance to, uh, you know, start remotely. And then once the visa is issued, also to be definitely in the United States in person and then also with the respective host organization figuring out the, um, uh, in how far this hybrid, uh, hybrid and in person, um, and so on. So uh, yeah, we've learned through the pandemic, and uh, we are flexible in this regard. But it's definitely also planned for the fellows to be in the United States and also to uh, serve with the host organizations in person or in a hybrid mode. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. Uh, I think we have another question and uh, Bjorn, you can uh, maybe take this up, was like, what was the biggest driving force behind uh, the EIF and Atlas Core partnership? Um, yeah, I mean, as uh, you already mentioned, Molika, earlier, I mean, before the collaboration, um, we were already working together, the two organizations. So the idea has been developing uh, for quite a while. There's multiple um, advantages um, for, for the program. I mentioned the Virtual Leadership Institute earlier, which gives the fellows also the, the chance to not only make use of AIF's networks, but also um, Atlas Cross um, networks and, and also fellows from um, all over the world. It allows um, a, a truly international setup of the program and expose our fellows to our multiple stakeholders. Um, with uh, the expanding of our networks and thematic areas, this was another aspect that came into play. You know, so as I mentioned, we rebranded the fellowship uh, last year also in an, in an effort to um, cover more thematic areas and being more focused on the sustainable development goals. And in, in that regard, our uh, two organizations, Atlas Core and American India Foundations, are also very much um, aligned and have had the interest of collaborating more closely together for um, a while. We are working toward, towards the improvement of leadership skills in the social sector through international exposure and exchange. So therefore, the collaboration makes a lot of sense in, in many regards. And we are also interested in um, you know, further deepening this collaboration and exploring uh, new areas for, for our fellows and um, to really expose them to an international exchange and a professional development and um, furthering of their leadership skills. So it, fee it basically feeds into uh, the mission of, of both organizations, you know, of uh, strengthening international collaboration and um, for the American India Foundation, especially with a focus on US-India ties. Thank you so much, uh, Bern, for an uh, answering that. Um, I think we have another question is basically why is there an age range for applications and for like basically for applicants? Um, I think I can take that question up and answer that. Why do we have a specified age range uh, for the applicants? Our research and experience indicate that the, uh, that the fellowship is the best suited for young rising skilled professionals as opposed to professionals who are older than 35 e uh, years of age. The reason for this is that our host organization placements are more appropriate for someone uh, with some experience, but generally not over uh, 12 years of work experience. For this special initiative, we're looking for candidates who are at least 27 years old because we're looking to uh, invest in Indian professionals who have already demonstrated um, a commitment to Indian civil society. Um, in addition, by having a specific uh, age range, we're able to tailor our training program to be more specific to the age group and the skill set that our fellows, like with, with the applicants when they walk in uh, for the fellowship experience. And um, that's why we have that age range uh, as well. Uh, Beyond, do you want to maybe elaborate on that? Any specific reason? Uh, that you also want to elaborate? I mean, you already covered it quite well, but um, um, yeah, as you said, I mean, we are expecting um, a certain level of experience. So this is where age comes into play, you know, so it's um, typically not um, 
like recent graduates, but um, also young professionals who have already um, um, gained experience in the social sector and that can actually present. We talked about the applications earlier, then actually that can, you know, make a point about the experiences and how they can weave them in into the fellowship experience. So therefore, it needs a certain, you know, age typically to actually gain those experiences to uh, um, to use them during the fellowship time. So that's, um, yeah, the main reason why there's a, a certain age limit. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, for those who are thinking about applying, uh, we would be happy uh, to see your applications coming in. I would encourage each applicant to visit our webpage, which is aif.atlascore.org, to read more about the fellowship, to know about the eligibility, the requirements, and to know more about our initiative. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who could join us today evening. Uh, to be a part of this webinar and to know more about our fellowship program. I would like to thank uh, the AIF Mer American India Foundation community and as well as my Atlas Core community for uh, being here with me, especially Manushi and uh, Vion for uh, participating and giving insights into the collaboration and the application process. Um, a great app and a note to everyone who's thinking about applying and to young professional, a great application takes time. So please give yourself that time so that you can really highlight your skills and unique talent and uh, can submit a great application. Please don't forget, it's a reminder, our application deadline is December 15th and you can get in touch with us if you, in case you have more questions later. Thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you very much.